Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where I talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of The Outpost. A great episode, a lot of really interesting things were done in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, there's the whole situation at the Capitol, which I thought was pretty uh, dope. Well, obviously, uh, you had uh, Zed acting as a distraction while um, Talon and um, Garrett got Tobin and Gwen. And I love that whole situation of like, all right, it's like, can you get Gwen? And then uh, Talon has her. And then he's struggling to pick up Tobin. She's like, do you want me to get both of them? Um but I love it. It's like immediately like, okay, where's the prison? Because they need to find where two is. And I was like, what, what role is she going to play in this? It didn't even correlate in my head. It's like, right. She had, and, and not until they got there, it's like, she has the ability to bring people back to life. And it's like, so far, the only way to kill uh, the uh, infection is to basically kill said person so that the kin, the infected kin, the infection inside of them dies and then bringing them back to life is the whole thing. Obviously, you know, this all rubs, you know, Garrett the wrong way because obviously it's still a fresh wound about everything, what they did, manipulated him and everything. But it's like, this is about saving Gwen and Tobin. So it's like, all right, we'll do it. But of course, there is a price to pay for all of this because at the end of the day, you know, a life costs a life. So it's like, oh, it doesn't come for free. I have to basically take the soul of another and give it to her. So now they're in that situation where like, well, we've got nearby people. All right, what did you do? And the guy's talking in riddles. And it's like, basically, he killed his wife and went crazy. This other kid, it's like, he's like, I did nothing. And it's like, no, he beat a peasant, um, peasant girl. So it's like, and it's like, and you know, Talon's like, do we believe her? And then like, Garrett's like, we can't believe it. Not even in the slightest can we trust her words. So now it's a situation of they need to save Gwen by any means necessary. So it's like, you know, because Garrett's like, that is where, uh, that's their duty as being loyal to her. So it's like to protect their queen, they have to do whatever it takes. It's like, obviously, Talon's not a fan of this, but chooses the old man. Because at the very least, it's like, he's not in his right mind, and at least we can spare him. You know, there's no reversing or saving him. So they end up, you know, Talon ends up, that's also pretty crazy having to be the one to kill Gwen by like I think it probably would have been simpler to do what uh, Garrett does to Tobin just stabbing her but like I mean to be fair it's like Talon's like I want Yavala to see and it's like strangling the life out of her that's kind of like it's like yo I even love when Gwen does come back she's like did you strangle me um because so that even though they're under Yavala's control there is still some part of them that is aware and conscious they can't control themselves but they're still aware of their it's not like oh like while they were under control they don't remember anything it's like they remember everything um but even Yavala being like holy crap she killed Gwen I didn't see that coming Oh, well, the lady, the dude's like, oh, I guess you're the queen now. And she's kind of like, oh, yes. Like, she's already being worshipped like a god now. It's like, oh, not only am I worshipped as god, like, in your eyes, because of the control, I'm even more of a, you know, I'm even more in charge. So, like, she's got even more sway over people. It's not like you really need it sway over people anyway, uh, considering you've got them all in control. That's almost like, that's why I'm like, what's the point of, like, having people, people worship you like a god? I guess it's, it's to get the non-believers to fall in line because if everyone else is like, oh, this is your new queen, other people, either you fall in line or you die, and then those who do fall in line get under control. That's why I'm like, what's the purpose? But I guess it's like, if they're doing it willingly, it's a lot easier to deal with. Nevertheless, they, like I said, Tobin gets brought back as well. So it's like, obviously, they'd be better off just killing her, but they, you know, Gwen acknowledges the promise that they made, giving their word of like, hey, we'll get you out of here. So, um, they end up sneaking her out. Zed, uh, ends up, as we see, like, he protects. Garrett from being controlled by killing the person that was trying to pass on their kinj and obviously, you know, Talon gives it the nod, like, all right, so they all get out of the capital all at the same time. Because luckily everyone thinks because I thought it was interesting, because we learned a little bit more interesting things about this Kinch situation, because it's like, well, obviously Yavala doesn't have eyes and ears everywhere, so to everyone else's knowledge, they, because until Yavala, like, possesses you, she doesn't, that knowledge that she knows doesn't pass on you, so she's like, oh, Gwen's dead, so she feels like she doesn't have to worry about it, so she's not worried about everything else, so... She won't, she doesn't know what you really know until, like, she connects with you. 
Like it's not just that the moment she's in your kin, she knows everything. It's like, no, the moment her kin is inside, once the kin is passed on to you, she then dives into your mind and knows everything. So she, she's not omnipotent. She has to like do it one at a time. She made it seem like at one point in time, she's going to be able to collectively control everyone's mind. Everyone's part of this hive mind and kind of they're on basically everyone's automatically on autopilot the entire time until she takes the reins, until she takes control. So... I think that's fascinating, but it's like that's how Gwen and Tobin were able to get out because it's like to everyone else who's under control, it's like, oh my god, this is the queen, she's one of us, she's one of us, yeah. Because so, it's interesting because like even with their kinjas, like because she's the only one that can, knows when uh, one of her kinjas is. What makes you wonder? Does she know? I mean, she felt it with Gwen, but to be fair, she was in control at the time, so it probably it it's almost like probably feeling death yourself. Um, I even love Garrett telling Tobin, "It's like okay, I I know, I know, de de dying is painful or something like that." It's like yeah. Uh, no shit, right? Uh, but it's like, well, he's obviously speaking from per personal experience of having died and come back, so he knows more so than anybody. But still, it's kind of a no shit dying is painful. Uh, but um, but it, like I said, it's just, it shows you that it isn't like an omnipotent thing. It is a limit. So I wonder, does she naturally feel the death of everyone? Like, unless she's in control of them, does she even feel when other kids should die? Probably not. Like I said, Gwen's situation was very specific because she was in control. She, she was connected to Gwen at the time of Gwen dying, you know, so... Um, but at the same time, there's everything in the outpost. Um, obviously, obviously, you know, the dude in control is making people fight, in particular black bloods, because for him, it's like, I was going to kill them anyway. So being the sadistic douchebag that he is, he makes a sport out of it, making them fight each other to the death. It's like, if you don't kill, if you don't kill the other, I kill both of you. You know, that type of situation. So... Obviously, he's making a sport out of it. There's very little food coming in because even the Lakiri aren't bringing the food in. Obviously, like, he's taking a liking to Warlita, and obviously, Mont was trying to stand up for her. But, you know, and even Janzo being like, you hurt Mont again? I'm not serving you. He's like, you might want to, he's like, oh, you, that means you're expendable. It's like, I'm literally the only person in this town who knows how to make the alcohol. So it's like, you can go ahead and get rid of me, but your men, oh, you go through alcohol pretty quickly, and your men love to drink. So, you know. So it's kind of Janzo showing that he does t technically still have leverage in this situation, you know, and sadly Wardlita kind of has to cozy up to home dude, but it's just like, oh, you know, because it just shows you how sweet Munt is and obviously he cares about her. And obviously I love that Janzo and Munt are back there and they're eating and everything. And, um, well, it's more so Munt keeps eating and Janzo has to stop and say, stop eating. He's like, I'm sorry, I get hungry when I'm worried. And it's like, he's worried about Wardlita. Obviously Janzo's worried about, um, Ren. Uh, what was also interesting too, and this kind of ties into the whole how the uh, Kinch thing works, is obviously that lady that was under control, she was meant to give it to Rin, but when push came to shove, that soldier wouldn't let her nearby, and uh, Yavala was like, give it to my daughter, but it's like, no, she gives it to that guy instead, and she's like, it's okay, my child, you'll split again, and then you'll give it to my daughter. I think that's so interesting because the Kinjas need to pass on is so strong that it outweighs. It's almost like it nature versus nurture. So it's like the things nature to pass on to infect someone else outweighs Yavala's control. And I thought that was so fascinating um, in the long run that, you know. Uh, but also, like, uh, kind of tying that all together, uh, what I thought was interesting, it's like, yeah, you know, it's like until, like, it took... Um, Janzo realizing, like, the Lakiri aren't bringing any food back. Why? Because that old hag is preventing us from getting food. She's trying to starve us out. It's kind of like, basically, hey, you can stay there and starve, or you can submit to me type of situation, and then you won't have to worry about it. So it's like putting them between a rock and a hard place. I mean, she knows that they were getting food. Granted, she never found out exactly, but I guess she was able to finally piece it together. And so she probably had people on the outside hunting all the nearby wildlife, making it so that the Lakiri couldn't find any wildlife nearby. They would have to probably even go further. But so probably getting rid of any wildlife within the near vicinity, probably hunting it and basically making it so they have no nearby food. Obviously, the dude in control of the outpost doesn't really care because obviously he's getting his and then the rest of the food, you know, the rest of the outpost is starving. Um, at the same time, we have Felista showing up, um, wanting in because she's looking for Tobin. And I love that she goes into the bar talking to Janzo. And I love just the casual, oh, Hey, hello, Baroness Felista. Hey, Mutt. And I'm like, how casual that is. It's like, you know, it's like, yeah, this is Tobin's new wife. It's like, oh, you're the woman that Tobin married uh, to uh, get the army and everything. You know, and Janzo's filling her in about everything. It's like, well, 
your husband's gone. He was infected. It was like, oh, but who did he leave with? Oh, yeah, who did he leave with? Oh, he left with Gwen. And it's like, I would go after and find him. It's like, no, nah, there are more capable people. You know, we've sent our top people after that. Uh, but also, it's like, well, you never know. Your husband might be dead. Which I also love that on the flip side of that, there's the other thing of, like, Garrett being like, you need to tell Gwen about Felicita. It's like, I can't. You know, I mean, for all I know, she might be dead. And it's like, that's what you're wishing for? He's like, yeah, I know it's not great, but come on. You know, it's like, I thought that was so effed up and hilarious that he was like, you know, for all I know, Felicita might be dead. It's like, this is your wife. I know it's a complicated thing because at one point in time, he did have strong feelings for her. But obviously he loves Gwen now. So it is, he's in a rock and a hard place because it's like, you know, it's like Gwen will understand what you did. Like, I mean, to be fair. Let's not forget, you and Gwen started off as a situation of, it was out of, a marriage out of necessity. It, was, it wasn't out of love, you know? So Gwen would understand, but I'm sure it's just, but in his mind, it's like, she's prideful, so she'd never, you know, she'd never accept me again after. And, it, you know, because obviously it's, it's, you know, marriage to a death, so. But it's, it's, it's kind of effed up that, uh, that Tobin was like, yeah, you know, I mean, maybe maybe, maybe it all worked out for me and she's actually dead. And actually, could we actually learn from her that uh, Gertie's actually been controlled, so um, that's what I thought was kind of interesting. So I guess they were able to get away from the Capitol before every, like, herself and the few soldiers that follow her got infected. But, um, what I thought was so interesting, though, too, because it was obviously the blame game between, like, everybody, because Gwen blames herself uh, because she got close to Yavala, but it's like, you didn't know what was going on, um, obviously, and, you know, Garrett's like, it was Zed's fault, he's the one that led Yavala here, and it's like, yes, but Zed's also the one that saved it, it's like, okay, it's like, I hope he's okay, it's like, he's gonna be fine, you know, uh, but then, like, obviously, like, she has to, the, uh, two has to run her mouth, and saying, like, if Talon had died, if Dread had succeeded in killing her in all black bloods, this wouldn't be an issue, and I love Talon coming over and punching her in the face, I was like, yeah, also thought it was interesting, and she says a line that's like, you had to bring, the, you, this is all your fault for bringing the white Kinge over from the other world, the Plane of Ash. And it was like, wait, what? what? It wasn't in the Plane of Ash, it was here. And the two was almost like, what? And I'm like, that's, that's the thing, it's like, what the hell are you talking about? That, to me, that like didn't make any sense. It's like, because even Talon brought that up to Garrett. Like, how would she, why would she think that? It's like, maybe it was an assumption on her part. It's like, no. And then, because she even said the thing of you humans. That's why I was like, aren't you human? So then I started thinking, is she, a, no, because she has regular, I was about to say she has regular blood. So I was about to say for a second, is she a black blood too that she's hidden herself? I was like, no. I'm assuming it has to be a situation of like, there's some deception on that part. Because I'm assuming the white Kinch must it was supposed to go to um maybe it was supposed to go to the plane of ash or something like that or maybe there's a I don't know because there was that chest well there was that no yeah the, the box um that like obviously supposedly uh Talon's dad had and everything so that didn't have the actual Kinch in it they found it underground but that is still like Maybe at one point in time it was, but it was brought here. I, I don't know. That, why, what, that, I don't know. That's so confusing because it's like, what does that mean? That's, that's the big mystery of the episode. Like, what the hell does she mean by that? Because it begs the question, like, well, if that's the case, then why? I don't know. I don't know. I don't want, I don't know how to make sense of that because I was about to say, like, not less it was secretly brought back here. Like, but that's also the thing, like, how would she know that Akinj was supposed to be in the Plain of Ash? She had to have been there when the Black Bloods initially, like, her dad got sent over there, like, because she was relative, like, you know, that couldn't have been, like, that wasn't too long ago, like, her dad was sent to the Plain of Ash, and he's supposedly dead, but I don't think he is. I think Yvala's lying about that, but it's like, maybe there's more to that. I don't know. There's there's definitely stuff that obviously that Yavala knows that no one else knows. Plus, it seems why why does two know so much about this? I mean, I guess when when you're when you have a kin yourself, I guess you're always worried about other kinjes, so you kind of keep an eye on knowing exactly where they were. Not unless she read some black blood like um history or something, and it's just as well. I I don't know what to make of that. So that's something to kind of keep in mind going forward. But um, at the same time. Um, obviously, uh, they find out that one of the soldiers is infected, and obviously, you know, um, Janzo was trying to buddy up with the guy in control to be like, hey, uh, maybe you can give me some grain so we can feed some of these people, but he's like, nice try, Brewer, 
and kind of ignores Janzo. And obviously this mother comes to her being like, I gave, gave, came to him being like, I gave my child what food am I share, but my child still needs more. And obviously Janzo wants to try to do whatever he can, but the rest of the place is starving until he realizes like, oh, we do have all these rats here. Meat is meat. So, and to be fair, you don't have to worry about the Kinch passing on through like when you eat them because it's like, well, they're dead. Anyway, the moment they die, the moment the animal dies, the Kinch die as well. Well, we also know she can infect. I was about to say, not she might not even had to kill the wildlife. All she probably had to do was have her nearby people infect the wildlife. I just thought about that too, just now because I was like, right, she can infect animals as well uh, and control them. But regardless, he, he found, finds that mom and gives her food. Like, obviously, Janzo doing everything he can to kind of keep, you know, some semblance of order. Obviously, that guy being like, the guy in control is like, oh, I'm ready to fight anyone who dares challenge. You know, you know, I won't even use my powers. And I'm like, oh, okay. And he's fighting everybody. I was almost thinking Felista was going to step up and then kick it, surprise everybody, and end up kicking his ass. But no. Um, obviously, uh, Yavala tried to infect um, Ren, but luckily, home dude saved her, and it's like, oh, okay. I was like, that's weird. You hate Black Lives Matter. I mean, granted, you hate infected more, but I'm like, well, what's up with that? And it's like, she's like, thank you. And before she could walk away, he's like, oh, there's a new challenger. And I'm like, oh, okay, here it is. And so he challenges Ren to a fight. Obviously, Ren's like, I'm a scientist. I'm not a fighter. But she still fights back. He tries to make sport of it. Oh, I'll put one hand behind my back, blah, 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 blah. And he messes Ren up. Obviously, Felista tries to stop him, but he it's like, she's like, he's like, but this is a black blood. He's like, I don't care if it's a gray skin, like, you don't do this, like, uh, you know, look at you, like, you're a man beating up a, a woman that didn't make it, you know? So, it's like, this is also like, this isn't, any, like, you had you have no honor, you know? But he's like, oh, I'm going to make you watch. I was like, oh, please, because we know that Talon and them are there. I was like, please, Talon, come on, show up at the last second, Talon. And she does. I'm like, in that moment, I was like, yes, that fight was the most gratifying feeling in the world. It's like, oh, you don't... I was like, the, I literally said it loud. I was like, oh, you fucked up now because you don't know who you're up against. Talon's the best of the best. You about to get your ass handed to you. What I also love, too, is like, what immediately came in the back of my mind, too, when I said that out loud, was it immediately made me think of that The Whitest Kids You Know sketch where um, Abe Lincoln is talking to John Wilkes Booth and he's like, you fucked up now. You have fucked up. It was literally making me think, this cannot be more perfect if you took a gif of that over and over again and put it there in that scene. Because I was like, oh, he's about to get his ass handed to him. Oh, it was going, oh this is going to be so good. This is going to be so amazing. And, you know, he's, he puts up a decent fight, but Talon whoops that ass. And I'm like, yes, like I said, it's the most gratifying hell yeah moment. Because it kind of reminded me of season one, where literally the last scene of an episode was Talon killing the last of the bones. That was like, you know, um, it immediately made me think of that. I was like, hell yeah. And he tries to use his kindred on her. She's like, oh, so you're the new one. She's like, I have a... Your kinch won't work on me. He's like, a kinch, so that's what it's called. He's like, yeah, but don't worry about it. Yours dies here with you. She kills him, and it's like, the outpost will always be ours. And once you're, it's like, yeah! Uh, taking back control. I'm like, yes! And But then, like, it went into the ground at first, because two was like, no! Like, oh, man, you know, because now the kinch is gone. There's no replacing it. So, But then it went on the ground. I was like, is that actually it dying, or did it get away? And then it crawls up, uh, bearing... Um, Baroness Felista's leg, and I'm like, okay. Granted, she's not as evil as he is, so her having it, not as bad, but it is complicated because now Tobin's going to have to be like, so Gwen, this is my wife. Yeah, that's going to be a whole thing. And obviously, he still loves Gwen, which obviously is going to complicate things because Felista has that, but it's like, are you going to use that for evil and to get your way? But now, it's, I mean, probably she doesn't realize, obviously she doesn't realize she has it, so obviously it's going to be out of her control. Like, probably when she gets a little flustered and mad, it kicks in. So, I mean, that's interesting because now under one roof, they have four Kinges. They have Zed's Kinge, Talon's Kinge, um, Two's Kinge, and One's Kinge that's inside of Felista now. So that's interesting. Obviously, they also still have no idea where Yavala is, but now the outpost is back under their control again. And hopefully they can go back to being able to feed people and everything. So things are good. It's going to be interesting to see what they do with two. Because she isn't a permanent solution. Because that means like every time you want to save someone, you'd have to kill someone. So, but, um. 
it's definitely going to be interesting to see uh, where all this ends. I'm very excited to see where everything takes us going forward into the new episode, uh, next episode, because there's going to be a lot of interesting developments and conversations about how they handle this. Um, luckily, Ren's okay. She's a little messed up, but she's okay. Everyone's okay. Things worked out perfectly and beautifully. But like I said, where do we go from here? Because Yavala's still the biggest threat out there. So new antagonist removed. Like I said, now what that what kind of effect that will have in the long run when it comes to Felista having one? Like I don't think she's going to go all bad. So I know the actress who plays Felista. I have to look into it. I've seen her in something. I just can't quite place it. Um, I feel like whatever I saw her in, she had an American accent. I just can't place it. I have to like I said, I'm gonna have to do some research. Uh, but regardless, um, so there's that. Plus, there's still three is out there somewhere in the world too, like hiding. Like what becomes of that? And that's another thing, too. So we'll see how this whole uh, situation plays out in the next episode. But really, that's all I'm going to talk about. Until the next time we meet, be happy, be safe. Love, like to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.